Welcome to our ultimate road trip of Puglia, the 250 mile long narrow hill of Italy. We spent a month exploring this beautiful region. When you think of Puglia, you may think of its iconic trillies. I know I did, but it has so much more to offer. I would say it's my favourite region and one that I'll be recommending to anyone who asks. Traditionally among one of the poorer parts of Italy, which has led to some delicious vegetarian dishes from times when meat was expensive. This vast flat landscape is perfect for arable farming. Puglia actually produces the most olive oil, wine and wheat in the country. Starting at the capital Bari, this seaside beauty would be perfect city break in the summer, famous for its Orchietti Pasta Nonnas and the Basilica St Nicholas. Don't forget to try the focaccia. Best focaccia I've ever had. Sorry Joe. Hugging the Adriatic coast further south is Polinano a Mare. A stunning old town would be worth a visit on its own, but its natural pools and caves make it an absolute must stop. Heading further inland is Alba Rabello, home to the highest concentration of trillies, the region's most iconic buildings with a very humble history. Originating in the 14th century as temporary field shelters constructed from dry stone, these were easily dismantled when locals heard the taxman's visit was imminent. So we have just come to a restaurant, it's called if that's how you pronounce it. It's in one of the trillies. So we've got orchietti with turnip tops and anchovies. It tastes really good. So when we ordered this, we thought this was all we were getting, that's why we ordered extra cheese, but it actually came with cheese. So we've got some mozzarella, I think, with bacon, olives, some meatballs, some sort of vegetables. Oh, and mussels. Mussels. I can't see the other two. That cheese is awful. Like, Whatever that is, that is strong. I've never, ever eaten like that. Just down the road is Loco Rotondo, said to be the prettiest town in Italy. The buildings were made even more majestic as we visited on the build up to Christmas. All the buildings are painted white, so all the Christmas decks really pop. Really pop. pop. Christmas Day was spent in the van parked up on the coast. We put our tiny oven through its paces and relaxed for a couple of days. With our newfound love of Trillies, we rented our own for New Year's Eve through Airbnb. Though the beauty of the building was outweighed by the cutest kitten, Mr. Peaches. The coast here is riddled with gorgeous beaches. We stopped at one. And got stuck, so we headed to Lecce, aka Florence of the South. A stunning city full of Baroque buildings, a sunken Roman amphitheatre and some great traditional restaurants. 30 minutes back to the coast you'll find the Cave of Poetry. Welcome to the Cave of Poetry! Among the most beautiful natural swimming pools in the world. It was great to have it to ourselves, but to come back here in the summer and be able to swim in the clear blue water would be incredible. Oh my god, there's a donkey. Hi! Hey, little guy! Oh. Hey. I just saw the cutest little baby pig and I couldn't get him on camera because he ran in but just came out of nowhere with all the uh, goats and the donkey is so cute. Oh, look at the little pig. further south we arrived in Otranto, a picturesque coastal town with a 15th century Aragonese castle. A short hike from the centre will land you at an old bauxite mine which has been left for nature to take its course.
the coastal road, we made it to Italy's easternmost point. You say it's a hike. Huh? <laughs> Marked by a 19th century lighthouse. Head south from here and you'll find yourself at the extreme point of Italy's hill. This is where the Adriatic meets the Ionian Sea. Ionian Sea? Adriatic. Ionian. Adriatic. What do you think of that then? It's nice. Don't really see a line though. No borders in my mind. We parked at Basilica Santa Maria and walked to the harbour. On our journey back up the western coast, we stopped at Galapoli, which translates from Roman to beautiful city. The old town was built on a limestone island which wasn't connected to the mainland until the 16th century. Our road trip wouldn't be complete without a quick look at the Nardo Ring, commissioned in the 70s by Fiat but now owned by Porsche. A 12 and a half kilometre banked circuit was designed to replicate neutral speed so the steering wheel doesn't need to be turned to stay straight at up to 150 miles an hour. It's home to a number of speed records, the most recent being the Koenigsegg CCR in 2005 at 241 miles an hour. This record was soon beaten the same year by the Bugatti Veyron, which was actually tested at the ring but crashed at over 240 miles an hour, leaving Bugatti with a bill to fix 1800 metres of crash barrier. If you appreciate authentic farm to table food, rustic villages, and gorgeous seaside towns, definitely consider Puglia. It's still got an incredible, unspoilt feel to it, and locals are among the friendliest we've met. Until next time, arrivederci.